Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick reminder today that log for shell attacks, attacks that are attempting to exploit the recent vulnerability in log 4 j are still a thing. While it sort of has fallen off the radar after this initial barrage of uh, attacks that typically just sort of took a prey and spray kind of approach to just throwing the string all over the place. Well, uh, now what we're seeing is attempts to tailor the exploit uh, to particular systems. Have one here that I wrote up today that looks like it's going a bit after Tomcat and trying to do sort of uh, some uh, bypass here in order to inject code into Tomcat. So don't stop uh, looking for vulnerable systems here if you haven't been hit yet uh, by any compromises. We definitely have uh, seen sort of more targeted attacks against, uh, for example, Unify uh, controllers as well as uh, VMware. And of course, over time, attackers will get better at exploiting this vulnerability against specific systems. Microsoft today released a special set of updates to deal with some of the failures that came up with last week's January cumulative patches. As quoted here by Bleeping Computer, this update addresses issues related to VPN connectivity, Windows Server domain controllers, restarting virtual machines, start failures, and REFS formatted removable media failing to mount. So let's hope that with this update, all the Windows patches for this month can finally be applied. And remember, there's still sort of that HTTP.sys issue that hasn't really been exploited yet, but is still sort of looming. And Cisco released a critical update for its Unified Contact Center Management Portal and its Unified Contact Center Domain Manager. Now, a little bit interesting here, uh, it has a CVSS score of 9.5, which is, of course, clearly identifying it as critical, but it's only characterized as a privilege escalation vulnerability. And in order to exploit it, you will actually need valid credentials. But once you do have those valid credentials, you'll be able to create administrator accounts. And of course, then you have full control over the system. To exploit it, an attacker just needs to send a special HTTP request. I suspect this is one of those issues where you have an API to create these administrative users and this API call actually never properly verifies whether or not the user has access to the particular feature. No workaround, so really the only thing you have going for you here is that Cisco has released the patch. And talking about critical vulnerabilities, we have another one from Zoho for their Desktop Central and Desktop Central MSP. Vulnerabilities in these products have been exploited widely in the past. The CVE number for this latest vulnerability is CVE 2021-44757. If exploited, this vulnerability does allow an attacker to read data from the system as well as write an arbitrary zip file to the server. And Google Chrome will make cross-site request forgery even more difficult by limiting access to resources loaded from private networks. So the scenario here would be that you're loading a page from a public website. That page includes a JavaScript tag or something along those lines that asks you to request a particular script or a particular resource from a 10 dot IP address. So from a private IP address, Google Chrome will now first send a course across origin request to that website with the access control request private network header. Only if the request is specifically allowed in a response, basically stating that access control allow private network true, only in that case will the request actually be sent and the resource used. This will also help in some DNS rebinding scenarios. Now, this is not going to be enforced until version 101 in Google Chrome or later. Until then, you may see some warnings 
in the console log if you're sending these requests. I can see this getting in the way of some developers sort of uh, loading resources from local systems uh, just for testing and such, but uh, don't really think it will affect a lot of actual valid public websites. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.